Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Smart Fox TV. I hope you enjoy, and if you like our videos, don't forget to subscribe. Hello, today is October 18th, and in 1977, on this date, Reggie Jackson made history. On October 18, 1977, in the sixth game of the World Series against the Los Angeles Dodgers, New York Yankees outfielder Reggie Jackson hits three home runs in a row off of three consecutive pitches from three different pitchers. Welcome to Smart Fox, and this is your day in history. Only the great Babe Ruth had ever hit three homers in a single World Series game. He did it twice, once in 1926 and once in 1928. But he didn't do it on consecutive pitches or even consecutive at-bats. Jackson's amazing home run streak helped the Yankees win the game and the series. During the pre-games, Jackson was unstoppable. He stepped to the plate and immediately knocked three pitches high into the Yankee Stadium's three-tier seats. He smacked the next one hard into the rear wall of the right field bleachers, and Jackson kept on pounding homers into the stands. In Jackson's 21-year career, he hit 563 home runs and retired as the all-time leader in series slugging with a .755 average. No one ever achieved what he did in 1977. Three home runs and three swings, and five homers in all in the series. Still, Jackson was uncharacteristically modest. He said, Babe Ruth was great. He said, I'm just lucky. I thought since World Series starts next week, we would dive a little bit deeper into a little bit of the history of baseball. Each year, the primary focus in any professional sport is the race for a championship. Every sport has their pinnacle trophy, but none is as coveted as baseball's World Series, a best seven contest that celebrates our national pastime, an event as important as any holiday on the calendar. It is the traditional as Thanksgiving, as patriotic as the 4th of July, and as anticipated as Christmas morning. Over the last century, the World Series has been woven into the fabric of America's culture, evolving far beyond a mere baseball tournament. It has become the game of all games and has continued to provide us with the endless highlight evoking childhood memories. The first World Series game was in 1903 against the Boston Americans and the Pittsburgh Pirates. The World Series as we know it didn't begin until 1905. The Major League Baseball had several versions of a postseason championship series before that. Our national pastime dates back just as far as our nation is old. I'm going to share today takes a little look at baseball throughout our history as a sport. In 1839, Abner Doubleday is credited with inventing baseball in Cooperstown, New York. In 1846, the Knickerbockers and a team of cricket players play in their first official game in New York City. In 1866, the field's first women's baseball team plays. Candy Cummings in 1867 throws the recorded first curveball. In 1869, the Cincinnati Red Stockings become the very first ever professional team. And then in 1876, the National League is created when the Chicago White Stockings beat Louisville 4-0. On June 12th, Lee Richmond pitches the very first perfect game. In 1884, Moses Fleetwood Walker becomes the first African-American player in Major League Baseball. In 1890, C.Y. Young pitches to in the majors for the first time. In 1900, the American League is founded. In 1903, the Boston Americans beat the Pittsburgh Pirates. In 1904, Alta Wise becomes the first woman to play professional baseball. In 1906, the Chicago Cubs win the most single season games in history at 116. In 1908, the famous song, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, is created. 
1918, the Star Spangled Banner is sung at a baseball game for the very first time. In 1919, in the most famous scandal in baseball history, eight players from the Chicago White Sox are accused of throwing the World Series against the Cincinnati Reds. In 1920, the Boston Red Sox sell George Herman Babe Ruth to the New York Yankees. In 1921, baseball is heard for the first time over the radio. In 1929, Babe Ruth hits his 500th home run. In 1933, the first All-Star game is played. In 1943, the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League is created. 340 major league players serve in the World War II. And then in 1945, Jackie Robinson signs with the Brooklyn Dodgers. In 1947, the New York Yankees beat the Brooklyn Dodgers in the first televised World Series. In 1954, the iconic World Series catch is made by Willie Mays of the New York Giants. In 1974, Atlanta Braves' Hank Aaron breaks Babe Ruth's career home run record with 715. In 1994, no World Series is held due to a player strike. In 1997, to honor Jackie Robinson, his number 42 is retired from all major and minor league teams. In 1998, Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa both passed Roger Maher's single season home run record with 70 and 66 respectively. In 2000, the Chicago Cubs and New York Mets opened the season in Tokyo, Japan to help grow the game globally. In 2002, the first Japanese player, Toshiyoshi Shinjo of San Francisco Giants partakes in a World Series. In 2004, the Boston Red Sox win their first World Series in 84 years over the St. Louis Cardinals. In 2007, Barry Bonds breaks Hank Aaron's home run record of 755. In 2008, the final game is an iconic Yankee Stadium. As of today, Monday, October 18th, the game is between the Red Sox and the Astros. Tomorrow, the Dodgers and the Braves. Between the four teams will determine who will be in the World Series. From the best of seven, it'll start on Tuesday, October 26th. Game one to be determined. Hey everyone, this is Kim and thanks for joining me for some dad jokes. What did the police officer say to his belly button? You're under arrest. This is Kim and thanks for joining me for my piece on Dag Welcome Jokes. Welcome to our news today. We might know some people, including ourselves, who may have picked up a hobby during the pandemic. For 14-year-old Mackenzie Beard of Wales, she started painting during the pandemic and has now sold some of her art for thousands of dollars, with one art being offered to be bought at over $10,000. Mackenzie's mother used to paint, so there were a lot of paints, canvases, and brushes in the home. On a whim, Mackenzie tried to paint her farmer neighbor after taking a picture of him. She entered the painting in a competition and won the Young Artist Summer Show. Her paintings began to be exhibited in the gallery and soon, people from all over the world wanted to buy her art. Most of her subjects are children or laborers with big smiles on their faces. Her most recent portrait is of her grandfather, but she does not plan to sell it because she wants to keep it. She also plans to keep painting, but she doesn't see it as a career and loves spending time playing field hockey too. Earlier this year, Molly Schiller made an announcement. She had just submitted her dissertation from her master's degree at the University of Birmingham. Her research was on the causes of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or HCM, a heart condition that killed her brother at just 10 years old. In her post, she hoped that her brother Max would be proud of her. Back in 2014, Molly's baby brother Max started to lose a lot of weight and energy. Her family and doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with his heart. They arranged an appointment for after the new year, but by January, Max suddenly died in his sleep from HCM. Molly shared that HCM is difficult to discover in the hearts of younger patients due to the fact that the hearts are still developing. Doctors would normally find thickening heart muscles in HCM patients, but with the young, it's really hard to detect. After Max died, Molly threw herself into her studies as a distraction and ultimately went into the sciences to try to learn more about her brother's condition. Her research looks into a specific genetic material that might be a marker for someone who has HCM. 
In honor of Max, Molly and her parents founded Max's Foundation, which helps fund research for heart diseases and helps families of HCM patients. The organization is currently partnered with other organizations currently finding people in the forefront of HCM research. Hopefully, they will find something soon. Thanks for joining us for today's good news. This is Kim. This is Tracy. Hi, this is Sally. And thanks for watching Smartbox TV. Stay, Stay boxy. boxy.